please see this question if you look at this question you may feel that you have already solved this question please find out this question in your practice manual and solve it on your own in your notebooks please solve it because do not leave any sum of the practice manual unsolved in your notebook it is very important that you should solve every sum that is given in the practice manual you should not give any chance to the examiner to cut your marks okay i hope you all can solve this sum on your own i am not solving this again let's move on to the important sum the core of the chapter the important sum is this please pause the video and find out this sum in your practice manual <laughs> Let's read it. Delta Limited currently has an equity share capital of rupees ten lakh, consisting of one lakh equity shares of rupees ten each. After reading this much, the first thing that should strike in your brain is Delta Limited has equity share capital of rupees ten lakh, consisting of rupees of one one lakh equity shares of rupees ten each. That means if it is only the this rupees ten lakh is only the share capital that Delta Limited has, then this company delta limited is entire equity shares okay they have no borrowings that is no debentures so that means there is no gearing and no leverage the company is going through a major expansion plan required to raise funds to the tune of rupees 6 lakh that is to the amount of rupees 6 lakh you can interpret it like this to finance the expansion the management has following plans so the management has came up with this following plans we have to find out which plan is more beneficial which plan the company should go in which plan will enhance the wealth of the shareholders this is the primary aim of the financial managers okay so plan 1 is issue 60000 equity shares of rupees 10 each again the company is going to receive money in the form of issuing of equity shares second plan is issue 40000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and balance through long term borrowing of rupees 12% interest per annum that means that company is again uh, receiving money that is borrowing money in the form of 40000 equity shares by issuing 40000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and borrowing remaining that is 2 lakhs 4 lakhs uh, 40000 into 10 is equal to 4 lakhs 4 lakhs minus 6 lakhs is equal to 2 lakhs that is the balance amount 2 lakhs they'll borrow in the form of long term borrowing at, at the rate of 12% interest per annum hope this is quite clear similarly plan 3 says issuing 30000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and 3000 rupees 100 each 9% debentures so that means 3 lakh of equity shares and 3 lakh of debentures 9% debentures hope this is clear fourth plan says issue 30,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and balance through 6% preferences that means again 3 lakh of equity shares 3 lakh equity shares and balance is 3 lakh preferences 6% preferences hope this is quite clear the EBIT of the company is expected to be rupees 4 lakh per annum assuming corporate tax rate 40% so corporate tax again income tax or tax rate is simply 40% okay you are required to calculate EPS in each of the above plan and ascertain the degree of financial leverage in each plan so we have to find out degree of financial leverage that is financial leverage dynamic formula quite simple I will be solving only the format and I will be showing you all I will not be solve and I will be not be going to solve entire sum so you have to solve the remaining part that is one or two line okay nothing difficult in that question 10 right practice manual pages particulars rupees sales the question will start directly from the EBIT we'll start from EBIT and since there are four plans we'll write it like this plan 1 plan 2 plan 3 and plan 4 we will start from EBIT EBIT is 4 lakh less interest 
we get EBT less tax at the rate forty percent. We get PBT profit before profit after tax sorry PAT profit after tax less preference dividend. This is the first sum of preference dividend where we are going to subtract preference dividend and we get net profit after tax that is PAT. So where interest will come? Interest will come in plan two and in plan three. Plan one is entire equity and plan four is equity plus preferences. So there is no question of interest. Okay. So we'll do in plan two. How much is the interest on two lakhs twelve percent? So we'll calculate like this: two lakhs into twelve percent. It comes to twenty four lakhs. Sorry, twenty four thousand. Sorry for the, all these silly things. It comes to rupees three lakh seventy six thousand. Plan in plan three, uh, there is nine percent debentures of rupees three lakhs. So we'll calculate three lakhs into nine percent. It comes to twenty seven thousand. So it is around three lakh. Seventy-three thousand EBIT. EBIT in Plan One is four lakh. EBIT in Plan One and Plan Four is four lakh. In Plan Two and Three, EBIT has changed to rupees three lakh seventy-six thousand and three lakh seventy-three thousand. So we just simply need to subtract the tax. Four lakhs into forty percent of EBT is equal to one lakh sixty thousand. We get PAT is equal to two lakh forty thousand, three lakh seventy six thousand into forty percent comes to rupees one lakh fifty thousand four hundred minus comes to two lakh twenty five thousand six hundred, three lakh seventy three thousand into forty percent comes to rupees one lakh forty nine thousand two hundred minus equal to it comes to two lakh twenty three thousand eight hundred. And again, plan four tax will be same one lakh sixty thousand only since EBT is equal to four lakhs, and PAT will equal to two lakh forty thousand. In plan one, there are no preference shares, so it will preference dividend will be dash. In plan two, no preference dividend dash. Plan three, no preference dividend dash. In plan four, there is a preference dividend since the preference shares are of rupees three lakhs and the. And the rate of preference share is six percent. So on three lakhs, we have to calculate six percent, which comes to around eighteen thousand. And finally, net profit after tax is equal to two lakh forty thousand, two lakh twenty five thousand six hundred, two lakh twenty three thousand eight hundred, two lakh two forty minus eighteen. Ha, two lakh twenty two thousand. We have to divide this by number of equity shares in Plan One. The number of equity shares will be equal to how much? So this is a very important thing. I'll be doing working over here. See, previously we had the Delta Limited already had one lakh equity shares. So firstly, we need to write one lakh in all the cases. One lakh. One lakh. One lakh. Plus the addition in plan one was sixty thousand, so we need to add sixty thousand, and it comes to equal to one lakh sixty thousand number of shares, and we will get EPS. And by divided by number of equity share, we get EPS. So it is equal to two lakh forty thousand divided by one lakh sixty thousand, one point five. EPS is one point five. Earning per share is rupees one point five. Here in Plan Two, we have issued forty thousand equity shares, so the number of equity share will come to one lakh forty thousand. EPS will be equal to two lakh twenty five thousand six hundred divided by one lakh forty, which is equal to rupees one point six one. In Plan Three, we have again issued. Thirty thousand equity shares, and in, as well as in plan four, thirty thousand equity shares. So we need to add this over here. One lakh thirty thousand 
number of shares and one lakh thirty thousand number of shares in plant four. Let's find out our earnings per share. One lakh twenty three thousand eight hundred divided by one lakh thirty thousand, which is equal to rupees one point seven two. And in the last plant four, that is two lakh twenty two thousand divided by one lakh thirty. The earnings is the rupees one point seven one. So. What do you think? Which plan is more beneficial? I hope you all said plan three because earning per share is maximum in plan three. I hope you all are able to find the difference. This is rupees one point five. Earning is rupees one point five, one point six one, one point seven two, and one point seven one. I hope this is quite clear. And degree of financial leverage. I hope you all are quite smart to calculate that right now. You all can easily calculate it. You all don't need my help. Firstly, find out the static formula and then degree. Okay. I hope this is quite clear. Please pause the video and copy this much.